Uh, and what I'm going to try to do is turn Sulik Sledge into a Super Sledge. I, I wonder if we can actually do that. So, and because he has a spare, I'm just going to take this one out of his pockets. And also place all the alcohol that we have now into Sulik's pocket. Oh, wait, no, I'm just going to sell that. Never mind. Never mind. Then we'll go up and see Skeeter really quick and see if we can actually do it. Because he should say something immediately after realizing that we have that in our inventory, like we did with the, the toolkit. Skeeter says, great, you've got my plasma regulator. Thanks. Now I owe you something for free work. What do you want me to work on? I'll tell you how much it would have cost, but this one's already paid for. So I did bring the part back to Skeeter, um, but I don't currently have something you can work on. And sadly, the regular sledge cannot be turned into a super sledge by him. And I actually don't know if that's even even a thing that can be done. And as far as I can tell, I don't really have anything else weapon related that I would want to. Maybe a hunting rifle? I could put an extended mag on the Desert Eagle. But we we don't we don't really need it. Right? And this is a this is a one shot deal. You bring him back, you bring him the part, and he'll do it once. Um There are other NPCs that do upgrades as well, but I think Skeeter in Skeeter's case, it's like one or two. I vaguely remember getting getting the the two step plasma thingy multiple times. We haven't gone to the harp yet. We haven't we haven't played Tragic the Garnering. Maybe we should do that before I lose my train of thought again. So let's talk to Wooz. A tall ghoul with long hair. Ooh, he's a rocker boy. He says, hello there. Looks like you're another tragic player. Have you time for a game or are you yeller? I'm calling you out. <laughs> These are both yes answers. <laughs> I don't have a choice. <laughs> sure, just let me. No, but stop. Your hand reaches for the deck. Seemingly of its own volition. No! And he even Wooz is on board. I know what you mean. I can stop anytime I want, just not today. You're not kidding. Actually, I wanted to ask you about something else. Oh, I can bypass playing playing cards, but I can I can ask to play anyway. I want to trade. He says, trade? I'm always ready to trade tragic cards. I've got a couple of old Vox Bubies, a Black Dahlia, and some rare Earths. Okay, these are all references to extremely rare cards, I think. Uh, Black Dahlia, at least. Um, that's a reference to the Black Lotus. Uh, I don't know what you're on, but I hope you have some in inventory to trade. Let's hope it's more than alcohol. Nope. He doesn't have anything. He doesn't have anything in his pockets. Let's play Tragic. Why, don't, why not? We're, we're playing for keeps, too. He says, well, Tragic the Garnering isn't just a game. It's an obsession. Not a cologne, either. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is layered. This is a layered joke. Some think that the way it changes a person's life is tragic, but they just don't understand it. Uh-huh. No, really. It's wonderful. You should play just once. The first box of cards is free. A little something for me to you. Thanks. Hey, these are great. You tear the wrapping off. Mmm. I just love that smell. Here we go. It's, it's, a, it's a gateway drug. He says, that's just the first part. Now you're one of us. Want to play a game? Sure. But you're going to have to show me how. So Woo's just won three times in a row. I don't know what determines... Your chance to win? But I have a luck of eight. Maybe it's gambling. Maybe gambling skill has, has an effect. Because I just lost three times in a row. But that's okay. I'm released from the curse that is Tragic the Garnering. Now he has all my cards. And is cursed to continue playing. Whereas I am free. Much like real life. I still have my magic cards though. I just don't really play with them. <laughs> Just just a few. Just a couple under my bed. Just a couple. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go until daytime. So what we're doing now is we, we are gonna go get the high, the high mag from Vault City. Um, I'm going to give Sulik... No, wait, no. No. I'm gonna run to Harry's really quick and sell him this extra booze that I have on me that has no real use. I'm looking to trade. This, these, and these. 
Dark Hour asks, Kato, as an unarmed melee-centric player, yes I am, would you like to see a return to unarmed weapons, i.e. Mega Power Fist, Burning Gloves, or Ripper Gloves, and what would you add from previous titles? Fallout 76, they reintroduced things like the Industrial Hand as something called the Gauntlet, um, which you can upgrade to, or, or modify to look like something like a zap glove. And I've, I've been using that primarily with, with my character in Fallout 76 because it just looks cool and it's I think it's one of the best unarmed weapons as of right now, as opposed to Death Claw Gauntlet, because that one's always been powerful. But yeah, the, the Mega Power Fist, Burning Gloves, and Ripper Gloves um, all have not been brought back. Most I would be into would be the Ripper Gloves, even though that is something that was, I'm pretty sure, only introduced in Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. And that was like one of the very few things that I liked about that game was the concept of Ripper Gloves. Or take something like the Shish Kebab a step further and make Flaming Claw Gloves. Wouldn't that be awesome? Or just or just uh, gauntlets that have um, like superheated blades. They got close to that with the Saturnite, the superheated Saturnite Power Fist. Just do that, but blades instead that would be cool but we're getting into new stuff territory not an actual answer to the question thanks for the question however i also realized that i have another big book of science that i can use on my character to raise our skill a bit more so we're at 22 now i'm gonna read this big book of science i learned new science information now it's at 29 okay so we're actually not that far off i still don't think i'll get enough skill points to work with though but i will use that last point because i would need 20 to get up to 50 but maybe maybe i could find some mentats at some point maybe i could do that hello guard man day pass please here you go uh i need to search your belongings okay all right looks like you're clean you can head on it thank you thank you guard man all right, now we're going to run over to Counselor McClure, the nicest of the counselors, the most pleasant of the counselors. However, he still is a good person, at least an agreeable person, in a city that condones slavery. I mean, servitude. Well, there's also an Austin Powers reference in here. In case, in case you wanted it, you want to see a little awesome powers reference in the parlor room bar. If I open the door here, look, chosen one. I'm trying to concentrate here. Okay, don't talk. It makes it crawl back up. Who does number two work for? There it is. <laughs> yeah, awesome powers reference. It's great. Good, good trilogy of movies. Recommend. Anyway, McClure, my man, right here. Senior council member McClure. He says, yes. Was there something else you wanted? Can I ask you some questions? He says, what is it you would like to know? I think you might have a part that could fix Gecko's power plant. He says, what do you mean? If I had a hydroelectric magnetosphere regulator, I could make their plant run clean. He says, that is an acceptable solution. Stopping the radiation poisoning is all I care about. Well, I, I'm worried that Lynette will withhold my citizenship if I fix the plant. He says, if you fix their plant, I'll give you citizenship. And there's not a darn thing she can do about it. Excellent. Where can I get the part? He says, go see Randall, the chief amenities officer. He should have the part in stock. Thanks. I'll go see him right now. So you can essentially uh, bypass... First Citizen Lynette with Senior Counselor McClure um, and not have to deal with her much at all. I, in fact, I don't think you have to talk to her. I don't think you have to talk to her, except maybe maybe to talk about like how the gecko power plant is busted. Anyway, back to this amenities office. Hello. Randall. I've already done this. I've already done this here. Okay. 
Uh, Councillor McClure said you have a hydroelectric magnetic regulator in stock that I could have. Randall says, yeah, he said you'd be stopping by. Kato, right? Wait one minute and I'll get you the hydroelectric magneto, uh, the high mag. All right. Randall says, okay, here you go. One high mag. Kind of looks like a lava lamp, doesn't it? Oh, don't drop it. It's pretty fragile. Got it. Thanks for the part. And look, it's even animated. It goes a whoosh. Pretty cool, right? This is the hydroelectric magnetosphere regulator, and it weighs 10 pounds. So I'm going to have somebody hold on to that. Probably Cassidy. Pro, uh, fun fact. Happens to be Cass's dad. Did I go over that? Did I mention that? Cass in New Vegas. This is her dad. I can't remember if I went over that. Hey, remember the New Vegas playthrough where she died from fire geckos? That was the thing that happened. <laughs> it was her fault, too. NPCs, companions, party members don't understand the concept of running away or even healing themselves when the mood strikes. This game does suffer from that as well. On the upside, though, this game is also turn based, where they have an option or an opportunity to leave or get away. Oh, I didn't realize that, that Cassidy's bar now has an out of business sign on it. That's funny. Here, here's where we're at, okay? So we've got the car part that we need for the car. We also have armor that we're going to need to slap on immediately. But we don't have enough money to buy the car. So what I'm going to do is a few random encounters. Probably going to die. Probably will die a couple of times. But we're going to head to Modoc because there's more people to trade with there. I should have been trading with everybody possible, to be honest. All right. Okay. Well, we've got an NCR patrol fighting slavers. That's hilarious and ironic. I'm going to watch. <laughs> Cuz there is going to be this this the rare opportunity where the slavers actually take out one of the guards. And then I get to reap the rewards for it. But it might be another case where they just get completely slaughtered and I take all their stuff. Either way, I win. That's how this goes. Because So I'm just going to sit here and watch people get murdered. I, I don't have to do anything. Maybe... <laughs> maybe this is the meta. This is the way to play. Just wander around outside Vault City. Or not an NCR patrol, a Vault City patrol. NCR is pretty uh well equipped as well. But just sitting here, sitting here waiting. Kitten asks, have you ever heard of Warhammer 40k? And if so, what do you think of it? Uh I'm indifferent, I guess, about Warhammer 40k. I have played Warhammer Vermintide, but that's Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah, it's a universe that I'm probably never going to get into, but I can appreciate it from afar, if that makes sense. Thank you for the question. It's very strange that the guards are running out of ammo so quickly, too. All right, well, I'm going to go up to this guy and punch him. Uh, take that slaver. Come on, Sulik. Show him the way of the spirits. Put Grampy Bone's foot up his booty. I wonder... I wa <laughs> Oh, dang it. I was going to say, I hope that guard stays on the ground so I can take this stuff off of him. Uh, that was in my tips and tricks for one of, one of the games. I think it was for Fallout 2. Wow, they actually killed one of the guards. Dude, if they dropped combat armor, I'm going to be so happy. I doubt it, though. I strongly doubt it. Ooh, Molotovs, though. Oh, that's lovely. If if this one slaver just... Oh, no. 
<laughs> well, now I have to kill everyone. <laughs> Man, I hope this doesn't make everybody mad at me. But they they wasted their um they wasted their ammo on burst shots. So I actually have an advantage now. <laughs> and they just shot their own dude. Average Jet Enjoyer says, I tried playing Fallout 1 and barely got to Vault 15, then gave up. Though I really want to play the old school Fallouts, but they are simply unplayable. Well, if you're not used to computer RPGs or classic RPGs like the original Fallout games, they are a lot harder to get into, especially if you're used to, you know, first and third person uh, action style RPGs. Um, and I totally recognize that. Anyway, if you want to ease yourself into the classic Fallout games, like you, you just really want to, but you, you can't get yourself to get over that that hump of either old visuals or um, ar archaic mechanics or something like that, um, I would strongly recommend something like Atom RPG or Wasteland 3 uh, as as something to better ease you into that, or or even something like Divinity Original Sin 2. All good, more modern takes and introductions into that genre to get you more comfortable with it so it's not as jarring if you go from something like Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 4 to Fallout 1 and 2. This kind of thing also inspired my Games for Fallout fans countdowns. So I'm going to plug those again if you want ideas of other post-apocalyptic games to play. Jamin P. Rose asks if you could choose one perk slash skill slash effect slash feature from Fallout 1 or 2 to be added to a modern Fallout game, what would it be? Well, in earlier episodes in Klamath, we already talked about the uh, addition of Vats having a groin and eyes option for aiming, which would be lovely, but I don't see that happening. A working vehicle would be great. Uh, <laughs> you can drive around the wastes or ride around the wastes. Even even like a mount, like a like a rideable death claw or something like that, would be neat. And traits, but to some extent, they've already been reintroduced in a different form. Uh, like in in the Outer Worlds, it's the phobia system. In uh, Fallout 76, it's the mutation system with uh, a benefit and a trade-off, and those can actually also be modified by certain perks. And I think that is a, a cool spin on traits. So either bring back traits or or have mutations be um, be a system that's uh, constant in in future Fallout games because that system is actually really cool. Thanks for the question. Right in the eyes. Nope. Could go for a weapon upgrade too, dude. So you can, oh, okay. So the thrust attack can, with the hammer, can go a hex away too. I didn't, did I just forget that? I probably forgot that. Don't call me an amateur. That's rude. That's so rude. I'll have you know that I've been playing Fallout for a very long time. Do you even know who I am? I'm just kidding. <laughs> there we go. That's something Vault City citizens would say. Do you know who I am? Do you even know? 1080 experience. And while this lady didn't drop armor, she did drop an assault rifle. This guy had a combat knife. This one also had a combat knife. I have a feeling there's gonna be... <gasps> oh! I can't remember which one's better. If if the cause is better or the combat is the combat shotgun. Spear knife can't carry that much. I wonder why. Let's let's make everything horrible. <laughs> let's make everything horrible for us. And give Cassidy a shotgun that has burst capabilities. I'm pretty sure it does. Let me switch that back, actually. This has... Yep. Burst capabilities. So much fun. Put that back in our pockets. Trade Cassidy again. Shotgun. That's really fun, isn't it? 
Chuck asks, which Fallout is your favorite and which build? Uh, this question is easy to answer. Uh, Fallout 2, this one, is my favorite, which is part of the reason why it took so long to make a Let's Play of it. And this style of build is also my favorite. If you can mix unarmed style fighting with uh, explosives, like that is, that is my jam. Great question. Thank you so much. Razalas Trebla asks, Hey, Kato, quick question. Which Fallout protagonist do you think is the strongest at the start or end of their respective game? Um, I think the Courier is probably, probably the strongest. Um, because all the other, a lot of the other ones start in vaults, whereas the Courier didn't. <laughs> um, so the Courier has a lot more, um, experience with the wastes and how um kind of societies and and such work in the wastes which automatically ups their survivability yeah i think i think it would be the courier because the rest are um vault dwellers or maybe maybe the chosen one of, of fallout 2 the playthrough we're doing right now maybe because they have to go through the temple of trials and they live in the wasteland um for the the majority of their life as a tribal kind of living off of the land or attempting to probably by the end the chosen one would be kind of on par with how maybe maybe how how the courier is about midway through as for the rest yeah probably probably not so much thank you for the question Special thanks to my Wasteland Legends, Sven and David Hoover, and thanks to the rest of my patrons on screen now. You can catch future episodes of this playthrough on Wednesdays and Fridays, noon and 10 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the Wasteland like you own it.